Hi and welcome back, Jin here. Sorry for the delay in the Mr. Love videos, but we are back again and we're going to do chapter 8 today. Now we start chapter 8. Yesterday, a widespread internet paralysis broke out in Loveland. It has affected all websites in the city. On every homepage, there's a signature by a hacker named Ke. Ke? Sakiro? It has deeply affected the daily lives of residents, but authorities have yet to respond as of 5pm today. We have reports that an investigation has been launched, but so far, no leads are forthcoming. It was on TV all night everywhere you turn. Who is this key guy? Is he well known? You don't know who key is? He's a legend among hackers. Well then 707 must know him too. Higgy started rattling off the dates and exploit of this so-called hacker god. 707 is the only hacker god, thank you very much. Key showed up in the hacker scene a long time back. 17 years ago, he hacked the servers of a classified wire research facility. Said to be the worst cyber attack in a hundred years. As they gabbed about Key, a long ago incident surfaced in my mind. 17 years back was when Miracle Finder debuted. Being five at the time, I didn't understand why my father got very busy all of a sudden. Much later in life, I found out my father's diligent reporting work saved the facility's most classified file from being leaked. His investigative piece caught massive attention, even in an era before the internet became popular. He tracked the incident and even made a documentary short that was the precursor for Miracle Finder. He exposed the hacking before it could get worse, and Kay just plain disappeared. So you're saying he's resurfaced? Nah, he's been back since last year, but he's been doing white hat stuff. White hat stuff? What's when they do good hacking or ethical hacking? My curiosity was suddenly piqued. In the past year, Keyes exposed a lot of malicious hackers and majorly reduced the amount of cybercrime occurring. And he leaves a calling card, his signature, every time he exposes someone. Like a Zorro. So cool. Even more amazing, no one's ever met him. Some of his old programs have been found, but no one's been able to crack them. He seems to be quite a flip-flopper though, no? There are suspicions it's not really him who crashed the net, but he's the only one skilled enough. There's a poll going around on the forums about why he pulled a 180. Apparently the leading theory is... Everybody held their breath as Keiki cleared her throat and slowly revealed. He has multiple personality disorder. <sighs> My curiosity got the best of me. So I did a search for Kay. King of the cyber world, legendary hacker, most feared hacker. Every news item warned how skilled and fearsome Kay is. But the more I read, the story started to take a bizarre turn. Former hacker god Kay obsessed with comic books. Oh my god, it is Kiro. Kay hacked site just to sneak preview Full Metal Alchemist finale. Loveland sold out of Key's favourite comic in one hour. I was bewildered. How come this Key was so different from the one my father investigated? Was the original Key Kiro's father? And Kiro's just continuing now? The Key from my father's notes was so silent. This mysterious return with a new temperament was making me believe the multiple personality theory. Too bad I have no idea how to reach him. <laughs> Oh, it's not answering. Okay, let's just call Victor back. The company is still intact, right? What? It's only been a few days, and suddenly you don't understand a basic question? Aren't you in America? How did you find out about it? I so regret asking right <laughs> now. Alright, I'm supposed to say nothing will stop us, short of losing your backing. Idiot. Any question or problem, see Goldman. Ha ha ha. Thanks for caring. 
I'm only looking out for my investment. Sure, Victor, sure. Knew you'd say that, but I appreciate it nevertheless. I'll be back next week. Anything I can get for you? For me? Don't you only look out for your investment? You did a good job on the report. Oh, a compliment. So you're awarding me, and solely for the hard work I did as an employee, correct? Do you want something or not? <laughs> of course I do. Do I get to pick two? Yes. All right, then I want you to make me pudding. What? That's it? Yeah. Haven't had it for a while now, and I miss it. You're easy to please. <laughs> oh, do you use your own special recipe? Can you teach it to me? I want to duplicate it, but it never turns out. My childhood memory is too hazy. Childhood memory? Yeah, it tasted just like the ones from my childhood. Remember anything else? That's pretty much all I remember. As usual, you remember nothing important. <laughs> Why are you suddenly so curious? Never mind. Pudding. I got it. Yes. Okay, I'm turning in now. Don't disturb me for the next six hours. Bye. Ah, <laughs> uh, you're the one calling me all the time. What's that? Nothing. Good night. <laughs> now I want some pudding. Next part. I put the idea of interviewing KSI to check out show proposals. But then my cell phone vibrated, notifying me of an email from the Hacker Consortium. I surreptitiously snuck the phone under the table and opened the email. Dear Big Daddy123, <laughs> what on earth? Big Daddy123? Is this a scam? Or a wrong email address? I kept reading. You are cordially invited to attend the annual Hacker Summit. Below is the address and password. Wrong address it was, and I didn't have Big Daddy123's email to forward it to him. <laughs> hey, are you with us? Anna nudged me. I'm still trying to think of a way to contact Keir. Everybody's looking for him. An exclusive would catapult us right to the top. Only if we were part of that scene, you might have some insider knowledge. Part of the scene? I do have this email. What do you know about the Hacker Consortium? Oh my god, that's like a collection of the best hackers in Loveland. Seeing how in she was, I got the bright idea of going to that summit. Who knows what I might turn up. Sorry, Big Daddy123, but after all, it was sent to my inbox. Maybe it's fate. At that thought, I winked at Anna. I might have an in. Now that it was decided, I started digging up anything I could on the consortium and their summit. I came to find out they hold this every year to exchange information and hone their skills. Because of the stringent screening, only the best of the best were invited. The email got to the wrong person, but at just the right time. Naturally, I would have to spend the next three days cramming as to not blow my cover. I ended up collecting reams of info. Anyone passing by my office couldn't help but be impressed by the effort. But only I knew I never got past the first page. I know what the words mean individually, but not when they're strung together like this. Three gruelling days later came the summit. I navigated through winding alleys using GPS. Go straight down Gord Alley, next to 787 Gold Boulevard. Turn left at the third intersection. Fifth intersection on Sunset Boulevard. Right turn and 500 metres uphill. 199 Peacock Lane. I finally made it! I looked up and did a double take. Oh no, I wonder where it is. 
A giant cyber cafe sign was dangling in the wind over a rundown storefront with peeling paint. This is a place where only the best of the best are supposedly convening. I rubbed my eyes to make sure it wasn't a dream. Oh my god, it's Punkillies! Basic girl, basic hairstyle. What did you say? I suddenly noticed a man standing in the door with red spiky hair covered in metallic bling. Looking closer, it was actually an order to the chaos, just like his hair sticking straight up, not a strand out of place. He eyed me and shook his head. Were you talking to me? I can give you a cool new do, make you look fabulous. No, no, thanks. I waved now and backed up. Did I come to the wrong place? I checked the address and it was correct. I still had 30 minutes before the meeting, so I went looking for help. What sort of help would you be looking for? I circled the cafe a few times before settling on the group of weirdly dressed guys. Excuse me, is this the place for the hackers summer? They looked me over. How do you know about that? I uh, am here to participate. As I tried to bluff my way through, one of the guys couldn't help but laugh. First time, right? Remember to change into your costume before going in. What? You have to dress up for the hacker summer? Well, why would the hackers expose themselves? Of course. Seeing my confusion, the guy pointed at his friends. We're all hackers. When we meet IRL, we gotta keep our identity secret. The more famous, the more secret you gotta be. Don't you know that? I shook my head in ignorance before catching myself and nodded. So that's how it is. Lucky I didn't barge right in like this or my cover would be blown. Looking at how I was dressed, I decided I needed a makeover to at least try to look the part. I ran hastily into the only clothing shop around. And now we continue. This order do. I looked at my new self in the mirror and something felt off. I grabbed a ribbon and tied my hair up. That was a bit better. Whoa, looking good miss. This is a perfect fit for you. R really? Can you tell it to me? Of course, who wouldn't recognize such beauty? Oh, forget it then. No, no, I can't tell. I even forgot what you looked like just then. <laughs> Anything for a sale? Always tell the customers what they want to hear. I see. The summer was about to begin, so I bought it without hesitation. Holding down the brim of my hat, I jogged back to the cafe. The spike-head punk was still at the door, tapping his foot. He looked at me over and then spewed out a string of numbers. 58904853. So he's actually the gatekeeper? No wonder he mistook me for a passerby before I got all dressed up. I regurgitated the numbers I had memorized for so long. 57986719. He opened the cafe door behind him. You want a membership? 25% off all purchases. No thanks. I hurried through the door. I followed a long meandering corridor until I was just about dizzy before finally hearing the sounds of people. I opened the door to a simple, all black and white conference room with a wedge-shaped wooden ceiling panel suspended like a riddle above and seats welded out of zero and one shaped metal pieces. Binary. My heart beat fast knowing I was about to enter an unknown world under a false identity. I took a deep breath and kept going. A few hackers congregated by the door talking about something, erupting in laughter from time to time. Oh man, it's like they're speaking gibberish. I can't understand a thing. Better just move along. The room started to fill up. I moved carefully about with my back to the wall. And who might you be? A bunch of eyes suddenly turned in my direction. I froze in my best sneaking stance. What should I say? 
who was probably asking for my hand all. I'm a big daddy one, two, three. <laughs> that should be Victor, actually. Idiot. I could barely say the name out loud. First time, right? Remember to change into your costume before going in. <laughs> Gee, thanks. I slowly tried to slink away. So what's your take on the quantum password transmission method he just suggested? I once again froze in place. What the heck is that? Pop-up windows of info flashed in my mind and then it all went blank. Well, about that, I think, uh... I scoured my brain as hard as I could but couldn't find a single thing to say. Screw it. Just say something. Politicians do this all the time. Under certain situations, it's viable. Under certain other situations, it's uh, not. And with that, I dumbfounded not only myself, but everyone in the room. Oh, that's funny. All right, I'm gonna leave this part here for now. Next time, we'll see what happens in the hacker summer. I wonder if Kido's gonna come along in disguise and save us from some weird question. That's probably gonna be the case. But anyways, that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. And I'll see you tomorrow in the next episode of Mr. Love Queen Shows. But until then, bye for now.